Hello everyone. So thank you for coming out to today's partner session. My name is Liam Griffin. I'm a partner education and front end development advocate here at Shopify. And today I'll be showing you how to get started with building theme sections and section blocks. So for anyone that needs to leave uh, halfway through the presentation or if your connection drops or anything like that, we're going to be recording this webinar and providing everyone with a copy by the end of the week. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them throughout the presentation using the questions panel. There will be time for a Q&A session towards the end of the webinar, so I'll be able to get around to any queries that you have. My goal today is to cover all of the required steps that you'll need when you're getting started when you're creating sections and blocks for your custom themes. I'll also try to provide some general tips along the way for Shopify partners. Okay, so what do we need to cover today? Let's take a look at the agenda. So first off, we're going to look uh, at a very general sense. What are theme sections? Um, how can they work for you? What are the advantages for creating your own sections? We're going to look at the difference between static and dynamic sections. Uh, we're going to see you know, where the differences are, where these different sections live uh, relative to the theme. Then we're going to look at blocks. Um, these will give sections a lot more flexibility in terms of what kind of content can be in them. And we're going to just see um, how they can be set up. Um, then there'll be another tutorial on how blocks can be added to sections. Uh, following that, we're going to look at some real life examples of sections and blocks in some teams which are on a team store. Um, just some cool examples that I think um, can showcase exactly the power of using blocks and um, you know, really customizing your sections. And then, as I said at the end, uh, there'll be some time for questions and answers. So that's a lot to get through. So I'm going to jump right into it um, by asking what are theme sections? So sections are modular customizable parts of a page. That can, they can have specific functions like a gallery that has a fixed number of images or there could be various functions in a section. So uh, for example, a, a footer that can show um, some menu items and a, a newsletter sign up form. Uh, they can be um, included in the theme in a very fixed or static way um, so that they will just stay in one section and um, that could be like a header or they can be dynamically added to a theme. That's usually on the home page and you might have seen that before if you work with Shopify themes and you look at a home page you can see that sections can be moved around very easily on the, on the left hand side if you're moving a, a gallery around for example. Uh, so today we're going to look at those two types of sections, uh, as well as how to add blocks to the sections, which gives you know, another level of customize, um, and customizability there. So previously, modular elements or um, you know, different parts of a page, such as a newsletter sign-up form, could be added to your theme as a snippet and would live in a, in a snippet folder. Um, Recently, we've, we've changed this model and we've added sections, which allows a lot more flexibility in terms of where uh, your clients and merchants might want to place uh, these different sections or, or change how that section might appear. So you could say that sections are like snippets, but with superpowers. And when working with sections, it's important to, to understand the, the theme structure and where those sections are going to live. Um, and we've, we've kind of changed the, the, the structure of uh, themes uh, to bring in that new level of uh, flexibility. Uh, so we've added a new directory within the theme structure where all sections are located. Um, surprisingly enough, it's called sections in the, the root directory. And in order for the theme to render your sections, they'll need to be stored in this folder. They'll also need to be stored as liquid files. And there's also a very specific uh, format as well that they'll need to follow. And we're, we're going to take a look at what that looks like soon. So like I said, there's two different types of, um, of section. There is static and there is dynamic. And 
Um, sa static sections are sections which um, they like like the name, they don't move around, they're added to a very specific location within a liquid file or within a page. Um, these sections can be on any page of a theme, so they could be on the home page, they could be on the cart page, they could be on the product page, for example. And um, as opposed to that, a dynamic section, um, as it's suggested by the name, it's, it's, a, it's a movable section. And you can add and move these sections around through the, the theme, customized theme part of the admin. And there, at the moment, these types of sections, they can only be added to the home page. So uh, you'll be able to, when you log in, I'm, I'm, you might have seen this before, when you go to your customized theme part of your admin, um, on the home page, you will see uh, options for adding sections. But you're not going to see though that option for adding section on other parts of the uh, of your theme. If you move to other uh, areas like the card page, you're not going to see an option for adding a section. There'll only be static sections here. So before we dive into looking at how we build sections and blocks into our themes, I'd just like to encourage anyone out there watching who doesn't have a Shopify partner account uh, to sign up for one as soon as you can. Uh, once you have a, a free partner account, you can set up uh, as many development stores as you like. And you can use these stores to uh, test out what I'm showing here. And there's also a range of other benefits to being in the partner program, uh, like being able to uh, earn revenue from referring clients. So I definitely would uh, recommend setting up a partner's account. So I'm going to jump into the tutorial now that will show you how to create um, sections. So I'm going to be showing you how to create two different sections. Uh, and the first one is going to be a static section. So I have my theme here ready. This is my development store. And uh, the theme I'm using is debut. So I've already populated uh, my debut theme with a few uh, nice images. And I'm going to just go into go into my customized theme section. So um, it's possible that um, it's coming up to a busy period for this merchant's store and um, they might want to give some information and make some information about shipping very visible or they might want to give some information about uh, discount codes that they have. And one common place that um, merchants might want to have this information could be on the cart page. Um, so it could be kind of cool to have an option somewhere on this card page to add um, custom text. Um, very, you know, it could be cool below the um, checkout buttons before the ad, before the payment buttons to be able to say maybe something about um, shipping could take up to three weeks if it's a, if it's a busy period. Um, they know that there's going to be a lot of people, sh you know, buying uh, clothes. Um, they might want to just remind and, and, and make it very clear to customers about the shipping times. So it might be nice to have an option here to do that. Uh, over here, you can see where our sections are. Um, at the moment, we have three different sections, header, card page, and footer. Um, and if there was something for custom text, this is where the options for that section would live. There's nothing there right now. Um, but I think it would be kind of cool, so that's what we're going to make. Um, just bring it back a step here. If we go back to our theme, and if we were to create a section from uh, the theme uh, editor itself, from the admin, you go into edit code, and you can see the uh, directories that we were looking at just a few minutes ago here. And we would be putting the sections into uh, section, into this area here in, in the sections. And when you create a new section within the Shopify admin, within the theme editor here, if I click on add a new section, I'm going to call this Thursday today. You can see when I create it, it's already populated um, some code in here. So this is, uh, it's got some schema, some settings here, and it's got some style sheet, and it's got some, some, 
some tags for JavaScript. Um, so these, this is really the base of the section. Um, the, the section isn't really going to work without this, which is why it's automatically populated in when we create a section from here. And you'll see in a few minutes that we're going to add in HTML above this schema section here, and we're also going to add in uh, objects um, in, in an array, um, which will link with the HTML um, to create the uh, elements on the theme editor that we want, so all the different types of inputs and outputs. Um, but when working with code as well, I like to think that it's, uh, it's very like uh, cooking, and uh, you know you have to be very precise. You have to have the right ingredients, um, and you know you know once you're once you're very precise, um, everything will come out okay. But if it doesn't, if you're not precise, you know things could get, go wrong. And, and and I like that metaphor. And when I'm working with with sections, I like to think that sections are a bit like pizza. So it's like like making pizza. And of course, the first thing for making pizza is you're going to need a base. So I I see this as kind of like the pizza base. And then all of the different toppings uh, will go on top of that. Uh, so I'm not actually going to use the admin for uh, making the sections. So I'm going to delete this. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use um, my local text editor. So I'm on my Mac. I'm running uh, ThemeKit. Um, if you're developing themes, I'd really recommend uh, finding this on, on Google. It's if you just Google Shopify ThemeKit. It allows you to work locally with uh, liquid files on a text editor. I'm using Atom, but you could use something like Sublime as well. And you can make changes using your local editor. And those changes, once you save them, they go live straight onto your theme. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I'm just, I've got terminal open here. So I'm going to go into my directory. And then I'm going to run the command that will uh, monitor any changes. So now anytime I make a change to this theme that's connected by ThemeKit, those changes will be reflected um, on my live theme, which is just pretty cool. So now I have this theme that we were just looking at. That's I have this open in Atom and I'm looking at my sections folder here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new section. So I'm going to create a new file. And um, like I said, like we saw before, we need the base to this pizza. So we need the schema part. So I've just uh, saved um, this in my text expander. You, you can save this code wherever you like, but it's it's obviously very important. It's what we need to get this section to, to come alive. So we're going to be putting a lot of uh, code into within this schema part here. Um, that's what's going to be really controlling um, the different elements and, and will be controlling how it's displayed on the customized team uh, area of the admin. Um, and also just a little explanation of these other tags here. There are these, this is for CSS below these uh, liquid tags with the style sheet and also some for, for JavaScript here. Um, you don't actually need to add anything into these tags. Um, you can add um, your own styling if you like. That would be only specific to this section. But by default, um, all of the um, styles are being drawn from the um, from from your uh, default um, style sheet, which is usually theme.scss.liquid. So above our pizza base, our schema settings, we're going to add our uh, toppings, our HTML. So I have some uh, HTML here already written and um, Remember, we're, this is going to be um, some like a text notice. So I want uh, to, this to be very visible. So that's why I'm going to be using um, H1 tag for the title of this um, custom text box. Um, and then below that, there's going to be 
another box that's going to be in H3. So there's going to be a title and there's going to be a, um, a just a description, our content. Uh, so you can see here uh, we have um, liquid tags again and here you can see section dot settings and dot text box title. So the section dot settings, that's what's going to tell the theme that this is uh, going to be connected lower down here to the to schema and that it's, that it's part of the section. And so I'm going to also put in some uh, objects here. And you can see here, I've just populated this schema section with our um, content that's going to be connected to the HTML here. So you can see here, I have an ID um, for the first object here. Um, this object, it's got this, the four lines of code here is going to be one object. And then the four lines of code below here is going to be our second object. So the first one is the, got the ID of text box title, which is corresponding here, up here with our H1. Uh, section dot settings dot text box title that's corresponding there so I'm gonna that's that's forming a bond a link between those two and then I'm going to say that the type um, of output that this is going to be is going to be text um, there is a range of other options that you could use here um, and I, I can show you a link later that will show you the other types of output um, but the type here is going to be text, so that's going to be a very plain text field. And uh, then below that, we're going to we have a label uh, that's kind of giving instructions to your the merchant or to your client of what this is uh, being used for. And I'm just uh, putting heading as the label here. And then at default, uh, this variable um, is it's a it's a placeholder. And that will determine what's going to show up um, just uh, when the, uh, the field is blank. And then below that we have our second object. And this is again, the ID is corresponding with our, our H3. And you can see text box content, ID text box content. Uh, the type this time is rich text, so it's a little bit different to our text field. Rich text will give a little bit more options in terms of formatting, and it'll also mean we can put in a hyperlink, something like that. Uh, then the label, again, as I said, is like the instructions, and that's going to just be reading add custom text below. And then, um, again, the default, that's going to be our like our placeholder. So before I save the, yeah, I'm just going to save it and I'm going to give it a name. So it's going to be text hyphen cart dot liquid and it's going to be in the sections folder. So once I've saved that and you can see it's coming, the liquid's coming up in nice colors here. Uh, once I've saved that, that should uh, be added now to our theme. But our theme now needs to know exactly where that's going to live. So we've created the section, but we haven't really said where that's going to appear. So we're going to need to go out of our sections folder and go into templates, and go into cart.liquid. And here we're going to tell the theme that it needs to include uh, this um, section. So I'm going to uh, open, have uh, some liquid, tags here so open curly bracket percentage section and then we're going to give the name of the section which is text dot hyphen cart and before I save this I'm just going to go back into our theme and just look again quickly at the cart page so hopefully once I've saved this we will see our section appearing uh, down here with the other static sections and we'll be able to add custom text in here. So 
So I've just saved this now. And I'm going to reload here. And now you can see um, there's some extra content here and our, our section is now appearing here in, in text box. So I'm just going to look, I'm going to show quickly again the different inputs and outputs here. So if we go back and look at our text cart liquid, you can see the ID um, that's not really outputting to anything. It's just forming a connection between the HTML above and the schema settings below. Um, the type is text for this first uh, object. So you can see that is just this heading title. It's a very plain text field. Um, and then you can see uh, the label is heading. And we can see that's appearing here as the set of the instructions are, it's defining what the role of this uh, field is. And then the default, the placeholder is title. You can see that is here. And then similarly um, for the objects below, um, it's rich text, it's got a little bit more formatting. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, the placeholder is add custom text below. And, uh, and the, the label the instructions is add custom text below. And then the, the placeholder is, is add your text here. So a merchant can now um, use this custom text to you know, add in some, some information that they have. So it could be something about um, shipping times. And then you can even make something bold or you can add in a link. There could be um, maybe a link that you want to include or there could be, you could even put in like a discount code that someone can use on the, the checkout when they move to the next page. So that's a very, very simple example of, of a section. Um, there's not a lot of code there. If, uh, if you go back to the pizza metaphor, this would be a very, very basic margarita pizza very plain, uh, but I just wanted to show you, um, you know, the very, very basics and fundamentals of what a, a section is. And, um, and, and like I said, this is a static section. You can't move this section anywhere. It's fixed. It's going to be exactly where I place it within the theme. Um, and you saw that at the cart.liquid page. Okay, so moving on, um, we're going to look um, a little bit more at uh, other types of sections. Uh, like I said, uh, there's dynamic and there's static. So you can always tell what a dynamic section is when you see these um, little dots uh, to the right of the section. And you can see that the little um, hand cursor turns into a hand. And you can move these around. So for these sections, like the slideshow and featured collection, in debut, these are uh, dynamic sections. And you can add more dynamic sections to the home page when you click on Add Section. And you can see a range of, and these are all dynamic sections. So, you know, for example, a gallery, um, you can move the, the gallery around very, very easily. So that is a dynamic section. So we're going to look at how to make a dynamic section for the home page. So this is um, an apparel store. Um, these, these, this actually this main image. Uh, you can get images like these if you're making uh, custom themes. We have a library of uh, really great imagery. If you go to burst.shopify.com, um, this is where I, I always get my my images when I'm making test stores, um, and also, if you're looking for demo data for, see it, for populating your store very quickly with products, um, we do have um, some really good uh, resources like CSV files that you can just uh, populate your, your, your test store with um, sample products. So that's where I'm actually getting these from as well. So if you even just Google Shopify apparel stores, you should find 
um, our Shopify Partners blog, which will give you a CSV file to uh, download similar um, images, which is really helpful if you're building stores for clients and you want to very quickly create something. Uh, but yeah, back to um, creating a dynamic section. Um, it might be very cool if uh, I had a, maybe I have a PDF of a lookbook or like a catalog from my apparel store and I want people to be able to maybe download that very, very easily. So maybe a call to action on the home page with a button that will bring um, someone to a page where they can download or even just to download it straight away could be really cool. So I think that's the kind of dynamic section I might want to create an option for at least. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Atom again, and I'm going to create a, another new file. And again, um, we're going to first of all start off uh, with the, the schema section. So that's the base again. So the schema section for a dynamic section looks a little bit different because you're going to be seeing uh, what are called presets. So presets, this is what the presets are going to look like if you want to turn your section into a dynamic section. You're going to see this appearing within the schema section, um, that scaffolding that I showed you earlier. And the, the presets are going to have two um, variables that are very important, um, the name and the category. So if you're section has presets and there is a name and if there's a category then the theme automatically knows that this is a dynamic theme right? that it's it's a dynamic section and because these presets are in it it's going to be automatically available uh, from the home page when you're in the customized theme part of your admin um, you don't need to add this to any template. You don't need to go into theme.liquid or into index.liquid to make it appear on the home page. The theme will automatically know um, that it's a dynamic section and therefore it should be available uh, in the theme editor automatically, which is a pretty cool, um, pretty cool feature. So I'm going to take that away for a moment and I'm going to bring in uh, the schema section for this this call to action um, button that I'm going to create so this is uh, a lot of schema code here uh, a lot of JSON um, and you can see that there is going to be um, three main objects in this uh, section. You're seeing uh, here the uh, a text box, a link, and then a link text. And what the HTML is going to look like, I'm going to add this up here. And then I'm just going to quickly save it so you can see the, the nice colors. So I'm going to call this um, call this call to action. Dot liquid. And again, it's in the sections uh, section. It's in the sections uh, directory. So I'm just going to break down what this file looks like a little bit more. So as before, you can see uh, we have name and settings. Um, and we have a, a few different objects in this array. Uh, so we have, again, you can see ID, this text box, and that's corresponding to this HTML, which is up here. And uh, all of the, the styling as well, by the way, is all being um, added from the main style sheet. And I, I'm just using a very uh, generic um, styling for this, uh, but you can get as creative um, as you want with, with these. Um, I'm just showing you just the very basics right now so you can get an idea of the, of the structure of, of sections. So you can see the ID, as I said, 
is corresponding to this text box. So that's our, our first thing here. That's in a H3. We have um, a, a, a title, um, which you know might be giving some instructions about what this uh, call to action is about. Um, and the type of the, the type for this again is text. So like we saw in the the uh, previous section, it's going to be a very basic uh, text field. The label is going to be again the instructions, uh, and again that's going to be heading, uh, very simple. And the default again is going to be title. So it's it's going to look a little bit like what we we saw before, but um, this is where the the difference is going to come in now. So. Here we have a, a link and um, the class, like I said, the, the, this is um, being referenced at the, the style sheet. And we have, uh, again, section.settings is meaning that it's going to be part of a section, uh, but that it's, uh, I, I'm giving it the ID of link, which is connected down here. And now instead of, of text, we're going to give it type of URL. Um, so this uh, will be telling the theme that um, this is now going to be a, a URL. Um, I'm giving it. I'm still going to give it uh, instructions on the label, um, but you'll notice that there's no uh, default uh, because there's no uh, because it's a link. There's no need for any any placeholder or anything like that. So this is also part of of the button. So. Um, I also have section dot settings dot link text because I want to give uh, the button some text itself. Uh, so I have it connected to the ID link text is um, is the same up here. Um, again, type is text, so it's going to be that basic uh, text field. Uh, the instructions will be just button text. Default will be a very simple. Just click here. That's um, Pretty straightforward. And then below all of this, um, you have again the presets. So, like I said, to make a section dynamic, this presets needs to be here. Um, if this presets isn't here, uh, then the uh, team doesn't know it's a dynamic section, so it's not actually going to uh, locate it anywhere. Um, but when presets are here, um, you're going to see that appearing as an option when you're on the team editor and you are on the home page. So I'm just going to save that. And now when I go to my home page again, I'm just going to reload. And now when I go to add section, you're going to see um, the call to action is appearing here. And when I click on it, I can I can now add it. You can see my, my placeholders are appearing, title and click here. And when I click to add it, I can, again, you can see title, um, button link, button text, and they're all corresponding exactly with the information that I've entered in the different objects in this array within the settings. So I could say um, download our uh, lookbook. And then I'll, I can have that linking to anywhere that could be um, on a page, you know, free ebook. And then I can just save it. And then you'll see it appearing on the left hand side. I have my call to action here. And then I'm able to move this around now. Make it spell correctly. So now yeah, I can move I can move this around. That's making it a dynamic section now. And this can go anywhere you like. And again you can you can change the formatting um, to make that look you know however you want. Um, I'm only trying to uh, show the very basics of how to make uh, sections. You can make this look as complex uh, as you like yourself. 
And then when I'm happy with this, I can just save it. So that is um, sections. Those are the two types. That is the static and the dynamic sections. Um, so now we're going to look at section blocks. Um, so to put blocks into context, blocks are containers of, of settings and content, um, which can be um, added, removed, reordered within a section itself. So we can think of blocks as like sections within sections. Uh, what makes blocks different to sections is that elements can be moved around within the section. Uh, and you can, you can create a range of different types of blocks uh, for these sections and the positions of these blocks can be changed. So it's, you, and you do this all from the theme editor. So it really adds a huge amount of customizability to, um, to websites. So if you're designing a theme for a client, um, you know, you can create an array and of different uh, section types and within those sections, you can create a range of different blocks. And that really um, gives so much power to the merchant because um, to your client because they can really you know create exactly the type of home page that they're looking for so uh, like I said a block can be it can be a range of different content um, you can have uh, images you can have videos you can have custom text um, but there also also needs to be a little bit um, you know to, to think in a kind of restrained uh, perspective as well because um, blocks can be repeatable, so it's it's kind of important to set limits where is where it's appropriate, uh, because you don't want to have um, you know very allow the potential for poor user interface by allowing you know a crazy amount of video blocks, for example, which might you know have um, you know impacts on loading speed, for example. So um, I'm going to look into how we can make a very basic sample block. Um, again, uh, we're going to, it's going to be very similar to the, the call to action button here, but this time I'm going to add the, the potential for um, multiple uh, call to actions. So I'm just going to delete what we, uh, we made there. And I'm going to uh, go back to Atom. And I'm going to create a new file from here. So as we saw with sections, um, we're going to be looking at uh, a, a similar enough structure in terms of the having the, that base of the, the schema um, and the HTML above it. But there's going to be some new additions that we're going to be bringing in. So I'm going to just start off with um, our schema. So again, this is a, a lot, a lot of code that's happening here. But I'm going to just break it down a little bit. Um, so, with um, blocks, uh, one new set, new part in the the beginning of the schema is uh, max blocks. So this means that you can set a limit for the max amount of blocks which is going to be um, in this section. Um, then uh, you can see again very similarly. Um, we have um, settings. Um, this is for more general for that section. And then this is where our blocks are coming in below the, the settings, before below the general settings for the section. Um, here I'm having uh, type is going to be, um, I'm going to be giving an option that you can select uh, different blocks. And um, there's going to be a link and uh, URL, and I'll, I'll look through these uh, more in a minute. This will make more sense when we see the, the HTML for it. 
So above the schema, we're going to include our HTML. And I'm just going to save this quickly. And I'm going to call this call to action box. So here we're seeing a little bit um, more uh, complexity than we saw than with our dynamic section. Um, and what the big difference here is we're seeing a code here for, for blocks. Uh, so what's uh, what you're seeing here is below our our basic section dot settings but below that uh, that liquid that we're we're kind of used to seeing now is there's this new um, this new code here that's um, this is a for loop and it's it's iterating through this section dot block so this is telling uh, the file this is telling the theme that this uh, section has blocks in it and uh, because these these are repeatable, um, you're seeing you're seeing a loop here as well. And that loop is is ending here, and this is what is going to allow your blocks to render. Without this uh, for loop, um, your blocks are not going to work very well, or at all. Uh, and then you can see as well in for blocks the um, the syntax is going to be block dot settings, uh, whereas before it was section dot settings, and then you put in your ID. In this case, it's going to be block dot set dot settings, and then you can have your ID. And again, you can see above in our section dot settings dot text box, this is corresponding again with our section settings in the schema in the the base, and for our blocks, we're seeing a very similar thing again, um, but this time it's it's for we have a separate section within schema just for blocks, a se section, a separate area, a sec separate array uh, for blocks. And you can see that here we have um, some objects. They this is giving the um, the link and also the link text for our button so it's telling our button um, that it's it, it needs to be assigned a link and it also can be assigned some text uh, so you're seeing this here with the the id block settings dot link uh, so that's that's corresponding with the link here and then in the second uh, object we have an id of link text and that's corresponding with our link text here So when we save this, we should see when we go back to our theme, and I'm going to reload this. And because this is a, a dynamic theme, is a, a dynamic section again, we have our presets at the bottom as well. And we also have, um, within the presets this time we also have blocks. So this is actually giving um, a default number of blocks that are going to appear um, as a default uh, in this section. So if we go to click on add section, we now can see there's, new, there's, a, new, um, there's a new section that's available in our call to action uh, category. If we click on this, you can see now there's two call to action boxes. And, and you can create a range of different types of, of outputs as well. I'm just click selecting um, call to action bu uh, buttons as uh, just as an example. But you can, you can have a, a wide range of other options. So when I add this in, you can see now that we have some settings and we have some, some content here. So if I go back to uh, Atom quickly and I look at our code, you can see that um, we have um, the the basic settings. We have ID, we have text box, we have text and the heading, which is what we're seeing here is the sort of the general. You can think of general settings just for this section. 
and then below we have uh, content that we can add in and that's what the uh, blocks are this that's what this JSON code is uh, outputting to so again we have type select so you can select here and you can uh, add in your what you want to be um, populated here so for example if we're going to put in a we could put in any link here um, that you want or you can um, put in link to a specific page and you can also put in text so the title we could have um, you could say maybe free gifts we could have a, maybe a free ebook and we could have this could say free ebook And then we also have another block here. Um, like I said, by default, if we look again at the presets, I have had it two type selects. So there's, by default, there's gonna be two blocks that are going to appear when this uh, section is added to begin with. Again, I can just put in any, any link there and I can give it some text. So it could be a free uh, podcast. And um, now you can see I have another, um, I have the possibility to add another block. But if you remember, if we go back to Atom, I set the max blocks for three. So the most blocks that can be added in this section is three. And so when we added the third one, we can see this warning appear here that says three out of three blocks used. So that's telling us that we've, we've reached the, the, the limit. Uh, so you know we're not confused or when we, we can't add any more. Uh, so for this, um, I'm just going to put mystery gift. And I'm going to save this. And again, because there's presets, it's a dynamic section. So I can move that around anywhere I want on the home page between the header and the footer. So now it's just appearing here. Uh, in the middle, which I think is pretty cool. So when someone comes on to my, my apparel store, um, because it's, it's coming up to could be coming up to Christmas or Black Friday, and I want to entice people, I can offer them some free gifts, and they can they can pick the one that they want. And then again, just showing you what that code is looking like. So now I'm going to look at a few different uh, types of, um, of examples for this. But uh, I hope so far that you're enjoying the webinar. Um, I'm just gonna pull up some real life examples. Um, and in the meantime, um, since we're, we're talking about pizza so much, um, in, the co in the comments box or in the questions box, you can uh, let me know what your what, what, let me know what your favorite uh, pizza topping is. Personally, mine is pineapple. I know it's a pretty um, controversial choice, uh, but I'd love to hear what yours is. I'm seeing a uh, Hawaiian. Yeah, I uh, I would be definitely agreeing with that too. Uh, pepperoni and ricotta. It's a uh, it's a classic. Cheese. Yeah, if you're just feeling like that, that's that's cool too. Uh, oh, someone else is loving pineapple. Great to hear, Alicia. And uh, yeah, this you know just as there's loads of options for. Um, toppings on pizza, there's loads of options for adding different types of inputs for uh, blocks and for sections. So I'm just going to quickly look at some of my favorite blocks. Um, there's one really cool example that I like on the minimal theme. I'm just going to load this up really quickly. 
So this is a really good example of a static uh, footer and getting very creative with static footers. Um, you can see at the moment, this is very, this isn't very uh, exciting. It just has you know some follow us buttons and, and the newsletter. But if we click in here on the left hand side into footer, um, we can see what we have already. When we click on add content, um, we can actually add some more. Um, so you can add a menu, uh, that's maybe showing some uh, links to um, you know different parts of your site. So you could create a custom uh, menu just for your footer. Uh, I'll just pick main menu for the moment. And um, again, add content. I might pick uh, latest blog post. So this is going to pull up um, some you know if you're if you've got some news and you want to make that available down the bottom to give a little bit of life down below there. Um, and then also, um, because they're blocks, you can move those around. So you might want to have um, your social menus over on the right. You might want to have your newsletter sign up over on the left, your blog you know, in the middle. You can, you can move all those things around or you can very easily delete them if you think there's no need for that. Um, menu to be there. Um, you can move things around, which that gives you a lot of customizability uh, options, um, which is exactly what your clients are going to want um, to be able to change things around. You can also see as well that there's been limits imposed. So, uh, for example, for newsletter sign up, you're not going to want to be able to have more than one newsletter sign up. Um, because you know that can just be it's not very good practice uh, for uh, you know just for UX um, and the same with with social icons I mean you're not going to need that appearing more than once so being able to impose those limits is almost as important as being able to have those options to begin with and um, I'm just going to quickly as well show you what that um, set what that section would look like what that footer um, would look like on the back end. So you can see there's a lot of code here, um, a lot of code around if you have these different blocks, you'll need to be able to um, assign different um, spaces between them. But you can see again what the, that for loop that I was speaking about, the, the for block in section blocks uh, appearing here. Um, and that is wrapping all of the code for all of the blocks. So you can see uh, when block, they have a lot of you know, styling here going on. Um, when for, for blog and you have when for menu, you have similarly, there's different, I hate there's different header sizes. Uh, there's different options for link lists. And then when, when social, when text, when newsletter, and they all have their own um, styling, of course, and then that, that for loop closes again. So I just wanted to show you a little bit behind the scenes of what a more complex uh, block looks like. So that's the footer that Minimal has. I think that's that's pretty cool. If we go out here, there's, uh, I might uh, have time for um, one more uh, theme, uh, one more block before we take some questions and answers. Um, there's a new enough theme called Loft um, that is uh, made by Trailblaze, and uh, what I really liked was their shot, their slideshow with collection uh, section that they made. And um, when you when you click into it, you can see there's a lot of different settings here. But it's what what is really cool is the, the different kind of blocks that they allow. So there's a lot of different settings here. You can change the positioning of where the slideshow is appearing. You can change the height. Um, you can um, toggle the, uh, the autoplay speed. Um, you can also have an optimized image for mobile, which is really, really uh, clever. Um, there's a lot of different settings there. And then in the content section, this is where you'd be seeing the code for all the blocks. If you can, if you can visualize that, this is where you can add in uh, different slides and give the slides different um, text uh, and also different collections. So this is all, what you're seeing here is just all one section. 
Um, I've only added two collections in here. You can also add, there's a block here for promotion and you can add in your own text. Um, but this whole part here is just all one section with a bunch of different blocks. So that kind of gives you an idea of how uh, creative and how imaginative you can get with uh, blocks and with sections. So um, that's about it from me. Um, I'm going to just pause for a few minutes so you guys can gather any questions that you have. Um, but I just want to thank you guys for your attention so far. Um, if there's anything that you want me to, to just look over, if you have any other questions, um, you can put those into the question box. And I'm just going to take a break for a minute or two, and then we'll come back and we'll look at those. But thanks for your patience so far, guys. Okay, guys, I'm back again. I've just been looking through your questions. There's some really great ones there. Um, uh, uh, Jeanette, I uh, was wondering, is this is the webinar being recorded? It is, Jeanette, it's being recorded and we'll be distributing it by email uh, to everyone that signed up. Um, Miguel has a question on, he's, you're using, Miguel, you're using the Jumpstart theme and you'd like to, um, turn it into sections. Um, as far as I know, the Jumpstart theme was um, uh, made uh, before we incorporated sections into our regular themes. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think uh, uh, that theme is actually, it is being supported by Shopify, but it's being dis discontinued. So we're not really, um, it, it will be pretty difficult to actually turn that into a sections theme. Um, but that could be something that you might be able to contact the Shopify support uh, teams guys about. Um, I think Abe, you were asking as well, um, can, can you show how to convert non-section themes to allow sections? So um, like I said previously, it is, it would be a, a bigger, um, uh, to convert it would be pretty difficult. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that would be possible. I think it would be a pretty big um, overhaul of the team structure itself. Um, it could be worth considering looking at some of the um, the newer free teams. Um, you know, if it could be, you know, if you wanted to change theme, um, you know, there's a lot of really cool free themes out there at the moment. Narrative uh, will, will be one that kind of comes to mind for being very, very uh, flexible um, for a, a new section theme. Greg had a question, what sort of feedback do you get from the platform when you get the syntax or structure wrong? So if the syntax or structure is wrong, um, you, the, you you won't be actually able to save uh, the the theme 
itself. So if there's something wrong within the JSON, you'll get a warning that's telling you um, something in the JSON is wrong, we can't save. Um, so it's not a case that you can save something that's wrong and then you're not really able to, you know, you, it, you're not getting any feedback. Um, it, it, it does depend on what is wrong as well. Sometimes you'll get very specific uh, information that will tell you um, we're seeing an error on line you know, 116, for example. Um, and, and, and you would see that happening on the, the native um, team editor. If you were doing what I was doing and using your text editor um, and then um, transferring that information to the live theme, what you would see if you got the syntax wrong is that it wouldn't, uh, you'd see on terminal that there was a problem saving it so that the saving wouldn't have worked. Alicia uh, is asking if there are pre-written sections um, that can be added into themes. Um, as, as far as I know, there are not pre, um, pre-written pre sections. Um, I think the reason because of that would be, you know, every theme would have a lot of different um, stylistic um, like differences between them. So it would be very difficult to have uh, generic uh, sections that would apply across a range of themes. Julian is asking what, where my accent, I'm from, uh, my, my accent, it's a very neutral accent, but I'm actually from uh, Gaul, from Ireland, west coast of Ireland. Uh, but uh, thanks for asking, Julian. It's, it's very rainy here today, actually, Julian. So Aaron, you have, you have a, a fairly complex question about slideshows and making sure that the, uh, if I understand properly, it's the, the animation of the slideshows. Um, um, I would recommend maybe reaching out to um, maybe a, a partner manager or Shopify support just on that, that uh, on making, you know, on, on getting more information on um, slideshow animation. Um, if you if you do want to contact me on Twitter, I can try and find some resources for you on that. My Twitter handle is at Livin, so at G U R U L I V I N. I, I might be able to put this in here. And I can try and find some documentation on specifically slideshows. Um, or Alexander is asking about sections on other pages, so sections outside of the home page. Um, at the moment, so the, the dynamic sections will only be available on the home page. Um, as far as I know, it is part of our roadmap to have this available uh, on other pages, um, but I, I don't know exactly when that feature would be available. I know it is uh, something that would add a lot of um, a lot of flexibility to the other pages. Um, so I, I, I'm fairly certain that it is something that we'll be working on in the future. Again, Marcus, again, the, the dynamic sections are only available on the home page at the moment. There's another question about um, 
looking for another tutorial uh, for maybe a little bit more um, more basic on just creating and modifying themes. Um, I would uh, recommend looking at our, our webinars page and we do have a, a library of um, uh, existing um, webinars and some you know could be uh, interesting would be getting started with Slate which is um, like a scaffolding for, for theming. Um, that could be one that would be really really uh, helpful would be the getting started with Slate for example and that's that's for um, very basic creation of themes And yeah, Linda again, the, um, is asking about uh, pre-written sections. Um, at the moment, there's no you know, library of, of pre-written sections. Um, like I said, a lot of our themes would have a lot of stylistic changes. So um, one section will work on, on one theme, but not on another. Um, and, and if you try to transfer them, you might see a lot of uh, inconsistencies. So that, that wouldn't be something that I'd, I'd recommend. Abe is asking, uh, is it possible to add a, a color editor uh, in the in, in as a as a section uh, as a, an option within a section? There is. Um, I know that color picker is a uh, a possible input option. Um, I might try and pull up what the different other options are. Um, There is a range of different uh, inputs that you, you can use. So if you can still see my screen. Um, and I'm gonna, I'll drop this link as well into uh, the chat here. Oh, I think Tiffany might have actually already added it in. <laughs> so yeah, you can see here there is an A, um, in maybe not in the basic, but in the specialized input settings, uh, you can have a um, color picker can be a value there. Yeah. I can see uh, someone's asking me, uh, they're just down as a Shopify partner. They've added, they've um, created a dynamic section to a page and they've they sent me a YouTube video. I will definitely um, be uh, bookmarking that and watching it after this. And um, if, if, if you have information there, I can send you some feedback later on. So guys, I know that there's a lot of questions that I just um, not have time to answer right now because we're coming up to uh, uh, 10 past the hour. Um, but if you guys want to ask me those questions again, my Twitter handle, um, I'm going to put it out on the chat here. And um, feel free to uh, send me a direct message, and I can help you know answer your question. Uh, if I can't answer, I'll, I'll definitely put you in touch with people who can. Uh, and thanks again, guys, for, for your attention. Um, and I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and it gives you a little bit of inf inspiration uh, for creating your own uh, sections and your own blocks. And before I leave you guys as well, I just want to remind you of the next um, the next uh, webinar that we have coming up, um, it's by a, the very talented Andrew Turrell, who is a Vice President for Customer Experience Strategy at Already Red Interactive Agency. Um, 
there he's what he's going to be doing is looking at how to be truly customer centric um, so looking at some of the obstacles that can get in your way to really being there for your customers and how to overcome them so that could be looking at empathizing with your clients uh, as much as you do with empathizing with with customers um, looking at how to sell through customer centric approaches and um, just keeping that customer centric mindset so that's taking place on September 14th and um, you're you'll be able to uh, sign up to that for at shopify.com forward slash partners forward slash blog forward slash partner hyphen uh, webinars uh, yeah thanks again for your attention guys and like I said if you have any other questions you can get me on Twitter at GuruLivin. Thanks.